Hello, I'm Diane Schumacher. Welcome to the series finale of Dragon's Lair Update. Ahead, we're recapping the best moments from the 2017-2018 season and offering reflections from our nine-year run on Dragon Digital TV. First up is men's lacrosse. Howard and Hartford face off in the Region 20 Championship. Let's go to Gary Williams. The winner receives an automatic bid to the national tournament. Howard is the reigning and defending Region 20 champion. Coach Faust and his Dragons are looking to win back-to-back -back region titles for the first time in program history. Howard enters the final favored to win. The Dragons controlled Hartford in the regular season meeting, winning by a nine-goal margin. The Dragons enter the championship with a 9-2 record and on a 13-game winning streak against Region 20 schools dating back to 2017. Former Howard head coach Mike Jones is with us to size up both teams. Mike, what jumps out at you about this Howard team? Well, Gary, Howard has another talented team this year. They're the class of the region. Their strengths definitely lie in the attack and strong goalie play from Ellis. They do a great job in the middle of the field, and their long stick midfielders move the ball very well in transition. They get the ball to that attack group that's almost as good as the 2008 group that had two All-Americans, including Alex Ashcroft, who's the all-time leading single-season goal scorer in Howard history. Hartford enters with an 8-4 overall record. The Fighting Owls upset Anne Arundel in the Region 20 semifinal round. This is Hartford's first Region 20 championship game appearance since 2013. Hartford has lost his last six meetings against Howard, dating all the way back to 2015, and the Dragons have ended Hartford's season two years running. Mike, it looks like the Fighting Owls have their work cut out for them. Well, they've got some momentum coming off that win over Anne Arundel. It seems like they've shored up their offense, but they're definitely going to have some trouble with Howard's attack. Howard takes on Hartford in the Region 20 championship. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, first possession of the game. Eli Doyle, high to low shot. TJ Ellis with the save for Howard. Possession for Howard. Jake Pike draws the slide, frees up first team All-American Will Smith. Scores! Fast start for the Dragon. Good dives there from the midfield. Oh, a nice easy dump to Will Smith for the goal. Howard has a good possession here and they're moving the ball well. Leaves Reinhardt on the doorstep, open for an easy goal. Reinhardt gives Howard a three goal lead. First team All-American Ian Decker dodging, goes down. Pass is deflected, ground ball win for Braden Martin and he puts one on target. Smith has the defender hung up on the other side of the goal. Now he goes and just runs right by him. A look at the Dragons in transition. Reinhardt, Decker, back for Smith. Dragons putting in one of the best offensive efforts of the season in the region final. 6-0 Howard. Good patience from Decker. Hartford possession. Hartford with a good dodge, good ball movement. Open shot on the backside. Oh, Ellis with a great save. Now we're in transition for Howard. Reinhardt dodging, draws three defenders, moves it to Decker, and he extends Howard's lead to seven. Team captain Alex Stefanos going after the short stick. Stefanos with a good dodge, a little inside roll, easy goal. Harper on the extra man, moving the ball well, looking backside, oh, picked off. Now we start transition for Howard. Little flub there, but Howard's just so much more athletic that they get the ball down the field easily. Hartford attacking the unsettled situation. Reese Wiseman wide open in front, but Ellis rises to the occasion once again. Ellis hits Jared Thompson on the clear. Dragons in transition. Thompson to Reinhardt, one on one with the goalie, and Reinhardt wins at the moment of truth. Harvard's having real trouble with Howard's attack. Here they don't even slide. Reinhardt just turns the corner and puts it in the net. Smith just running down the field. Again, Hartford's late to slide. He just runs right in and dumps it right in the goal. Smith takes to the rim and gets the goal. A man down tally. Nine goal lead now for Howard. The Dragons are playing their best lacrosse of the year here in the region final. Howard goes the length of the field in three passes, setting up Smith for the open look. Good ball movement, but the ball gets on the ground. Howard fighting and fighting blue collar lacrosse there. 
finally pick up the ball. Nice shot into the goal. Eight minutes remaining. Reinhardt with the sixth of the day, the most he scored in a playoff game during his two years at Howard. Howard wins the region. Eric Faust and his Dragons deliver back-to-back -back Region 20 titles for the first time in program history. No matter how cold it is in late April, Coach Faust enjoys that water dump, especially for the second time in two years. After having a much better defensive performance compared to some other big games this year, what do you think was the, the cause for the strong defensive performance from the unit? Uh, we've had some rough games this year with our defense. Uh, I believe today we just um, hunkered down and kn knew what players we had to guard today. So uh, we did really good on that. So having a great defensive performance today, holding Hartford to you know below five until the last few minutes there, what does that do for the whole defense's confidence? Getting a big performance like that, you know, having number five in goal all the time, you know, that's a blessing. He's just he saves us so many times. I know today he's had so many uh, on the crease goal uh, shots, and so you know, having him in our goal, you know, saves us and having us. Uh, he's like a captain out there directing us what to do. Uh, so having him there makes our defense the best. Chris Reinhardt, you've now won back-to-back -back Region 20 championships here at Howard as one of the leaders on the team. Just express yourself. What does this day mean to you? Oh, it's, it's amazing. It feels great to come out here, keep playing. I just want to get to the championship and win it all. It's the goal here, So, but it's awesome. Great feeling. This winning back-to-back -back titles has never happened here at Howard. So being one of the key contributors both seasons, All-American last year, likely to be All-American this year, just – Put it in perspective, was that what you were expecting to do when you came here? Honestly, no, I didn't know what I was expecting. I didn't even know if I was going to start or not. Came out here, gave it my all, got to the region, won it. I was like, wow, this is awesome. So that was the whole mindset coming back this year, is do it again and just keep, keep pushing, get better every day. Howard received the number four seed in the national tournament, while Hartford was awarded the number five seed as the tournament's loan at large selection, setting up yet another Howard Hartford game, this time in the national tournament play-in game. Howard beat Hartford again, 16-9 Dragons was the final score. Which brings us to the JUCO Final Four. Howard is up against the undisputed number one junior college team in the land, Onondaga. This is a rematch of last year's national championship game. Onondaga held off Howard for its 10th men's lacrosse national title and the Lasers have not lost since. OCC enters the game with a 13-0 record and on a 28-game winning streak over the last two seasons. The Lasers will also enjoy home field advantage as they're hosting the Final Four for the third consecutive season. Mike, it looks like Onondaga is still thriving in transition and on the extra man, similar to previous seasons. Assess the Lasers for us. Coach Wilbur has this group playing an up-tempo game, which seems to be their calling card. They move the ball very well all over the field. They get defenses turned around, which leads to easy goals. Once they get their momentum going offensively, it's hard to stop, especially when they play make it take it, because they're so good at the faceoff X. Of course, they're solid on defense too, which is the start to that great transition. Traditionally, the coaching and the talent level that Onondaga brings to the field is better than a large group of NCAA programs. The Dragons enter the game with an 11-2 record. Howard will be looking to eliminate Onondaga in the national semifinal round, a feat no team has accomplished since 2008. Howard looks to upset the Lasers next. Let's go to the highlights. First quarter, Lasers won the opening faceoff. Stefanos doesn't step quite far enough upfield on this one. Let's the Onondaga midfielder just go across the crease. Tough shot to save. And Onondaga's offense produces on its first possession. Fast start for the defending national champs. OCC wins the ensuing faceoff. Thomas dodging, draws the slide. Good defense right here, nice early slide, forces a bad pass, get a good double team, ugh, but he breaks the double team and finds the guy right on the doorstep. Austin Stotts gives it to James Sexton on the crease. Onondaga swarming Howard out of the gate. After an OCC crease violation, Howard gets a much needed possession. Here Howard's in transition. This is one of the things that they do best moving the ball down the field quickly, getting it to their attack, who are deadly from that range. Howard first team All-Americans combined for a timely goal as Will Smith moves it to Ian Decker. Dragons man up unit takes the field. Howard's moving the ball well, an extra man here. Peroni moving well in the crease and a shot and a score. Howard with an unforced error, turnover for the Dragons. Cameron Hartman, all over the ground ball. The style of these two teams is very similar. Underdog likes to run transition as well. They get the ball up the field very quickly. 
get it to their attack, again, for an easy shot right on the crease. Gary Stotts behind the back assist from the Syracuse commit. He hits his cousin, Austin Stotts, and the momentum is back with Onondaga. Here's Onondaga in transition again. Getting the ball down the field quickly. Howard does a great job this time of getting back in the hole. A great save by Ellis. Now we get to go the other way. Big moment early in the game. Riley Ford powers across midfield. A flag is down, and Howard's Will Smith receives a slashing penalty. Flag is still down. Austin Stotts running downhill as he comes back onto the field. Scores! Gives the Lasers a two-goal lead as their extra man unit gets ready to take the field. Here, yeah, Austin Stotts gets picked up by the long pole who kind of just slaps at him. He runs right by him, right by two other guys, right to the goal. And a dog on the extra man, moving the ball quickly, right to the crease, picking up some momentum there. Travis Longboat converts the open look. Three unanswered for Onondaga, so there's a two-goal swing for Onondaga after an extremely physical play by their own rally forward. Tough series of events for Howard. OCC is also winning the face-off battle convincingly. Another possession for the Lasers. Onondaga's offense has found its rhythm. Here we see another assisted goal for the defending national champions. Here's another face-off win for Onondaga. Starts them in transition. They get the ball down the field quickly. Don't slide to stop the ball. Easy goal. Five goal lead now for the home side. And Dayton Fisher will go to the box. Unnecessary roughness penalty against Fisher. Ensuing extra man, Travis Longboat. In the middle, behind the back assist of Thomas, right on the crease. The Lasers have Howard in trouble here in the first quarter. Six unanswered goals for Onondaga. Howard's two men up on this play. Trying for the home run pass instead of the easy pass to move the defense. Now we've got Onondaga in transition again. One of the penalties is released. Now Onondaga has numbers going the other way. Lasers move to Austin Stotts, and he comes up with the man down goal. Deflating series of events for Howard. Onondaga looking to impose its will. The Lasers are a big physical team. This hit draws a flag. But Howard is simply not making them pay. Another turnover for the Dragons' extra man offense. Bad pass from the Howard man-up group leads to an over and back call, which gives Onondaga possession. Off the quick restart, instead of Howard getting in the hole and setting up a six on five defense, they slide upfield, leads to an easy on the crease goal again. Later in the second quarter, Alex Stefano's behind the goal. Stefano's with a nice drive here. Lose the ball, good defense by Onondaga. Puts the ball on the ground, but Reinhardt working hard. Picks up the ground ball, scores easily. Three goals over the last 10 minutes for the Dragons' sophomore. Reinhardt arguably the most clutch offensive player in the history of Howard men's lacrosse. Onondaga with another extra man opportunity. Finding the crease guy right in front of Ellis again for an easy goal. Onondaga three for four on the extra man in the first half. Onondaga finishes with three goals in the last two minutes before halftime, making a nine goal halftime lead for the Lasers. 143 remaining in the third quarter. Comfortable lead for the defending national champs. James Sexton delivers assist number three, goes to Russ Oaks. Onondaga scores two unanswered and the Lasers lead is now 11 goals. Lasers once again demonstrating excellent passing and movement on the extra man. Five assist day for Sexton, who hits Longboat in the middle, makes it a 13 goal OCC lead. Onondaga with another great championship team. Once they get the momentum going, it's hard to get them to stop. They're so talented and they do all the little things so well. Onondaga advances to the national championship game for the 10th consecutive season. Lasers put an end to Howard's season. 23 to 12 is your final. All right, Eric Faust. For, the program has been around since 2000, early 2000s, mm -hmm. and has never won back-to-back -back Region 20 titles during that time. You're the first coach to accomplish that feat. So now that you've had about a month or so to look back, how would you describe 2018 when you look back? Um, you know, it's it's it was a tough year. We. You know, it's the obviously the year after we get to the national championship and we lose by one to, you know, the perennial power Onondaga, um, and so to win the region again and then get back to the semifinals but not get to that championship game is pretty disappointing. Um, however, this program has achieved a lot, and 
you know, it's a, it's a testament to, <clears throat> you know, my, my, my players, of course, but also my assistant coaches who are, you know, incredibly, you know, committed to us, you know, being an excellent program. Um, but again, going back to the season, I think we, we did some things that's, that have never been accomplished before. I mean, we had the number one and number two scorers in the country. Um, I believe that's, that's accurate. It is. Yeah. Um, you know, Ian was the top goal scorer for two years in a row. Um, you know, we put up some great points, some big points offensively. Um, and defensively, we had, we had some great moments. Um, our starting goalie, TJ Ellis, is going to transfer to Salisbury and play for, uh, you know, arguably one of the greatest coaches in, you know, men's lacrosse history in Jim Berkman. Uh, you know, and it's, it, was, it was a great year. You know, if I, if I look back on, you know, the, the peaks and valleys, you know, I, I think there's definitely more peaks than valleys, you know. I think we had more ups than downs. Um, and this is a culture that is going to continually evolve. And, you know, going from, you know, a national championship appearance to a semifinal appearance isn't that, you know, there isn't that big of a difference. But in terms of expectations and, and what I put on myself as a coach and what we put on ourselves as a staff, um, you know, that's where we want to get every year is that championship game. And that's and, and ultimately win the championship. So, you know, we have our work cut out for us. I see Jared Thompson going to Queens, TJ Ellis, like you were saying, moving on to Salisbury. Mm -hmm. Any breaking news on players accomplishing the program goal, moving on to play four-year lacrosse? Dayton Fisher, number 21, close defenseman who really played out of position all year because um, he was a long stick midi his, uh, you know, the entirety of his career um, in high school. Dayton is going to uh, be heading to Columbus, Ohio, and he's going to be a Buckeye. He's going to play for uh, Division One Ohio State and Coach Myers. Coach Faust, talk about just, it happened so fast for your program, but Howard, for the longest time, hadn't beaten Nassau in 10 years, weren't able to get over the top in Region 20, and then all of a sudden in two years, now all of a sudden your team's really not only the back-to-back -back champion, but you're really the power in the region and you're winning games convincingly. What was the key to getting over that hump to where Howard was maybe seventh, sixth, fifth nationally and not winning big games to where you are now? Like, how did you build that over, like what were some important moments during that process of building the program up to where you are now? Well, I think, I think a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, our attention to detail and attention to fundamentals. Um, you know, this game is, it's, it's, uh, it's, I like to say it's controlled chaos. Um, but in order to be successful in a chaotic environment, you have to be able to fall back on things such as fundamentals. Um, you know, the ability to make the, the easy pass and pick up that, that first time ground ball when pressure is on is key. Um, you know, generally tight games can be um, decided in one, two, or three plays, it's, and and you know one mishap can can uh, you know change the outcome of a game. Um, and oftentimes, what that one mif mishap is is just an unforced error. So you know we've really focused on fundamentals and you know decision making. Um, and I, I, we wouldn't have been able to achieve what we have without, you know, the assistant coaches that I have or, or the support from the administration or, 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 or uh, you know, the higher administration with the school. Um, you know, it certainly was a growing process. You know, when I came in, we, you know, had, I think, I think my first season we had 25 guys, if I remember correctly, and, and I was talking to another coach uh, just yesterday about it and about you know the change in player like I have guys that are reaching out to the program now who I would have been ecstatic about you know <clears throat> but uh, now I, 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 I receive interest from players that I'm, I'm worried that if they do come in whether they're going to be able to play or not whether they're going to be able to compete whether they're going to be able, be able to see any time you know so that's a good problem to have but to go back to your question, how we have 
you know, been able to achieve the success we have in such a short period of time. I think, honestly, it's it's philosophy and just, um, you know, everybody working together. I, I think it's important that we listen to players as well. I mean, it's different than it was 15 years ago where the coach says, and you do. Um, and there still is a little bit of that, and I imagine that I still have some areas of growth in that in that um, arena. But you know, I think it's it's we try to create a family atmosphere, and we try to stick to our number one goal, which is um, you know getting guys to come here and play for a year or two, and then going to play Division One, two II, or three. So that's really what we're. It's not our goal at the start of every season isn't to win the championship. It's to prepare guys for the next level. And I think we're on the trend, a, a definite trend upward. If everything works out <clears throat> how I see it working out, we'll have 10 or 11 guys from this past year playing Division One, Two, II, or Three in the fall of 2018. It's time now for men's soccer. Our next guest played soccer professionally in Portugal, Hong Kong, and his native Bulgaria. He's entering his 15th season as Howard Community College's head men's soccer coach. It's a pleasure to welcome three-time Region 20 champion, Coach Stefan Dragunov. Welcome, Coach. Thank you, Diane. This past season, 2017, was a special season. You won the region. Tell us how special this team was. It was real special. Um, it was special just because the quality we put in this group by recruiting and bringing some players that we took chance on them and turned to the being successful and then in the season and advanced to the national. So we're so glad we had the opportunity to work with these uh, uh, players and make them special for us and for our program. Your 2017 season included wins over your rivals like Montgomery, Prince George's, and Northern Virginia. Why do you think your team was able to do so in these games? Well, we lost the game, uh, the re uh, regular season game against Nova. Um, it was a tough loss, one nothing here at home. Um, against Montgomery, against uh, PG, it's always been uh, a pleasure to uh, play against this program, uh, compete against them. Uh, but this season we we took care of business uh, uh, on the right uh, uh, time. Um, the players they were well prepared, uh, physically, mentally. Um, they were ready for the challenge, mm -hmm. and um, uh, my coaching staff uh, um, they did put a good job scouting uh, our opponents and, uh, and making the right uh, decisions and tactics against them. Your national championship run ended with a loss with the eventual national champion winner, Tennessee. Can you assess that game for us? It was a tough game. Um, it was a really tough opponent. Uh, experienced squad coming from a previous uh, national championship as a runner-up. Um, they look for uh, uh, make it up and uh, go to the uh, finals and uh, uh, win the finals. Um, Maybe with uh, more experienced players in our uh, squad, we could uh, uh, do better. Uh, but, you know, we got to admit they were a better, better uh, team and uh, they deserve uh, to advance and won the Nationals. As you know, this is the last episode and this is a finale of the Dragon Lair update. What has the TV shows meant to your program? I think make the players uh, feel better uh, about themselves uh, walking around the uh, campus and uh, um, uh, students uh, watch the show, uh, see them be part of it, um, uh, helped a lot for their self-esteem and uh, you know being student athlete, uh, special people in the um, in the college and uh, without uh, this promotion here at, uh, at this studio uh, I think that that would have happened. Now you've been here for 15 years the show has been here for nine years so if you don't mind let's reflect what has been your highlights over the years of your coaching career that you can share with us with um, your teams? 
definitely was a rough start as a you know new person here uh, in uh, in United States and taking over a program uh, that uh, is coming from uh, success. I think uh, they won the conference back in the 2003. Um, it wasn't easy, uh, but you know I went through uh, the rough part. Uh, but I think uh, um, I proved over the years that. Uh, um, I'm capable to winning this uh, program to success. Um, it's been a great pleasure working with uh, you under your uh, uh, leadership. Um, qualified three times for the nationals, uh, you know, losing three times in the regionals. Uh, of course, it's a part of the game, um, but I, I can be more proud of it of what I've been done here for uh, for this uh, program. And of course, as I said uh, without the help from you and uh, uh, the college um, that that's not gonna happen so uh, would have happened so uh, thank you for uh, your support over the years um, and wish you all the best with your new journey as going Thanks, to your retirement you know coach Dragunov it's been a joy to watch all of my coaches grow and evolve through the years of my 19 years here and you certainly have been the second longest tenure here at 15. And one of the greatest joys um, that I got to share with you was to go to nationals those so three times with you. And all three times, you would have your players all dressed up with matching vests, pants, and they were by far the best dressed group at the nationals. And that's, besides playing well, that's one of the memories I'll take. Well, it's a level. And you have to present yourself with class out there. You can't just go with jeans. <laughs> you have to look great. And that's my um, always been um, pleasure putting my players in front of everyone else. How they're going to look like it reflects on how they're going to play. And if they look sloppy, most likely they will play sloppy. So, of course, my wife, she's been helping me out with the designs. Uh, but you're right. They, all these three times we were out there, they look most organized and well-dressed group out there. I want to wish you the best as you continue your journey with the Dragons. And I hope someday you'll get one of those rings. Thank you, Dan. For those of you who don't know, I'm retiring at the end of June 2018. It's been a great 19 years for myself here at Howard Community College. And it's been a joy to bring Dragon's Lair Update to you. This is our 76th show. It'll also be our last. But the spirit of Dragon's Lair Update will live on in the form of highlights and interviews on our YouTube channel. I want to thank you for watching. And remember, one last time, go Dragons. On another note, although I am retiring, I want you to know, once a dragon, always a dragon. Thanks, folks.